Some of the strangest things you can possibly imagine are beginning to come true, like harvesting energy from thin air out of literally nothing. This sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous. But engineers are saying that actually it's true. And here is why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. Engineers say they're using nanotechnology to harvest electricity from thin air. Now there's a bit more to it than that. Let's have a look at the details. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts have discovered a method to harvest continuous electricity from air humidity using any material with nanopores smaller than 100 nanometers called the generic air gen effect. This technique is scalable and interruption free, paves the way for a broad range of cost effective, continuous electricity generation from various materials, overcoming limitations of condition dependent renewables like solar and wind power. Now I've reported on a few things like this in the past and they turned out to be maybe not so legit. This one though is 100% real. So what happened? Well, a team of researchers at the University of Massachusetts recently showed that nearly any material can be turned into a device that continuously harvests electricity from humidity in the air. The secret lies in being able to pepper the material with nanopores less than 100 nanometers in diameter. The research was published in the Journal of Advanced Materials. Now, my theory is this, right? The oceans are rising. We know that for sure to the point where it's not good for a lot of people who live on islands, who live near the ocean. It's not gonna be good for humanity. It's not good for animals, not good for anyone. Now, if these nano devices can harvest electricity from humidity, why not harvest electricity from water? I mean, what's the difference between warm water and humidity? If they found nanoparticles to do this, maybe they could potentially re-engineer them to solve that problem in some way in the future. This is very exciting, said a graduate student in electrical and computer engineering at UMass Amherst College of Engineering and the paper's lead author. We are opening up a wide door for harvesting clean electricity solely from thin air. The air contains an enormous amount of electricity, says Yun Yao, assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering at the College of Engineering at UMass Amherst and the paper's senior author. Think of a cloud, which is nothing more than a mass of water droplets. Each of those droplets contains a charge, and when conditions are right, the cloud can produce a lightning bolt. But we don't know how to reliably capture electricity from lightning. What we've done is to create a human-built, small-scale cloud that produces electricity for us predictably and continuously so that we can harvest it for free, forever, seriously. So how does it actually work? Well, the heart of the man-made cloud depends on what Yao and his colleagues call the generic air gen effect. And it builds on work that Yao and co-author Derek Lovely, distinguished professor of microbiology at UMass, had previously completed in 2020, showing that electricity could be continuously harvested from the air using a specialized material made of protein nanowires grown from the bacterium Geobacter sulfuroducens. Now that work was kind of the beginning stages to this work, which is far more advanced compared to where they were at back in 2020. What we realized after making the Geobacter discovery, says Yao, is that the ability to generate electricity from thin air, what we then called the air gen effect, turns out to be generic. Literally any kind of material can harvest electricity from thin air, as long as it has a certain property. So not really any type, but there's a lot. That property, what is it? It needs to have holes smaller than 100 nanometers or less than a thousandth of the width of a human hair. Now, if you pull a hair over your head and you see how thin it is, and then you try to imagine something having a hole in it, there's less than a one thousandth the width of that one strand of hair. I don't think you'd be able to see it with the human eye. The reason this works is because of a parameter known as the mean free path, the distance of a single molecule of a substance, in this case, water in the air, 
travels before it bumps into another single molecule of the same substance. When water molecules are suspended in the air, their mean free path is about 100 nanometers. Yao and his colleagues realized that they could design an electricity harvester based around this number. The harvester would be made from thin layer of material filled with nanopores, smaller than 100 nanometers, that would let water molecules pass from the upper to the lower part of the material. But because each pore is so small, the water molecules easily bump into the pore's edge as they pass through the thin layer. This means that the upper part of the layer would be bombarded with many more charge carrying water molecules than the lower part, creating a charge imbalance like that you see in a cloud as the upper part increases its charge relative to the lower part. This effectually creates a battery, one that runs as long as there's humidity in the air. The idea is simple, they said, but it's never been discovered before and it opens all kinds of possibilities. The harvester could be designed from literally all kinds of material, offering broad choices for cost effective and environment adaptable fabrications. You can imagine harvesters made of one kind of material for rainforest environments or in another for more arid regions. Since humidity is ever present, the harvester would run 24 seven every day of the week, rain or shine at night and whether or not the wind blows, which solves one of the major problems of technologies like wind and solar, which obviously only work when there's wind or when there's sun. Of course, yes, solar does work when there's no sun, but I mean when there's sunlight to some degree. Finally, because air humidity diffuses in three-dimensional space and the thickness of the air gen device is only a fraction of the width of a human hair, one one thousandth, many thousands of them can be stacked on top of each other efficiently scaling up the amount of energy without increasing the footprint of the device. Such an air gen device would be capable of delivering kilowatt level power for general electrical usage. Imagine a future world in which clean electricity is available everywhere you go. Everywhere you look, there's just clean, free electricity around your head, no matter where you are. The researchers said the generic air gen effect means that this future can become a reality. And imagine if it did. We could power anything from anywhere whenever we wanted for almost no cost. This is actually quite remarkable. I actually believe that with the advent of artificial intelligence, the combination of different AIs like combining ChatGPT with Google search and other things like that, that it won't be very long before these kinds of technologies are proven to work at mass scale in the real world, or at least we can actually figure out which ones work better and what their long-term effects would be. But those are my thoughts. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.